if someone says that this is in a fantasy book, I will be reading it no matter what. Oh, 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 I just thought of a good one. Big, a big dude. Hello and welcome back to another day of Bookmurse. Today I'm gonna to be talking about my favorite tropes in fantasy fiction. So I have a list of tropes that I've kind of made as I've thought of them and I've color coded them, ones that I can like and dislike. So there might be another part two video of ones that I dislike, but I'm gonna start off cheery and go on the ones that I do like. I kind of subsectioned them into kind of plot arcs or plot driven tropes, character tropes and kind of character relationships. So we're gonna start off with my all time favorite plot ever. Like if someone says that this is in a fantasy book, I will be reading it no matter what. And that is the heist. It kind of bleeds into another character trope that I like, but we'll go into that one later. But just the kind of the planning, the coming together, everything going wrong, like you know it's gonna go wrong, but somehow they're gonna have to do something that's gonna pull out the bag and they're all gonna achieve what they want, hopefully, maybe not. And I just love it. I think it's just such a fun way to structure a fantasy novel that you don't really see in traditional fantasy, you know, like it's not the typical journey, tends not to be anyway, you know, where you're going from point A to point B and you've got all these like struggles on the way. It's more, I suppose, grounded in probably one area or one city and you get just, I feel like you just get to see more of the characters. You just, I don't know, I just think it's, it's so much exciting and you've got that whole build up, you know, you kind of know where it's going from the start. So you have the whole time of the book to get hyped for this heist that's gonna happen. And I just love it. Some of my favorite heists are Six of Crows. You've got Best Served Cold, it's kind of a heist. And they're two of my favorite type books of all time. Mistborn is a heist, technically. You know, you've just got, you've just got so many good ones out there. They're all my favorite books and they all have heists in them. So I love a heist. Another kind of plot theme is retellings. I used to love this, maybe about a year ago, this was, if someone said it was a retelling of something, I was gonna pick it up. Less so now, it's just kind of, I've moved on a little bit in my taste, so I'm just not in that mood at the moment. But I will always be intrigued, I think, when someone says it's a retelling, especially if it's something that's not done a lot before. I'm a little bit over a lot of the fairy tale retellings, you know, we've done a lot of those, and even the ones that are kind of twisting it in a different way, are kind of getting to the stage where it's been done a lot now. So if it's like a retelling of like a different mythology or fairy tale that I haven't heard of, that's not as, as mainstream as maybe Disney have made it, those ones I think are a lot more interesting and I would definitely like to pick those ones up more. I haven't read one recently. I have quite a lot on my shelf, but I just never reach for them at the moment. But yeah, I like I like a fairy tale retelling. That's maybe not as much as the heist. You know, the heist is kind of pretty much a definite if someone says that. I will definitely be interested if someone says it's a retelling of some sort. So for characters, I've got a lot more characters than I do for plots. I do love the mentor. Like when you get that character that doesn't know anything, it's kind of, this is like very stereotypical fantasy, the mentor telling or teaching our unknowledgeable hero how to be the hero and then becoming the hero. I feel like you see that a lot in fantasy, but I like it, I do like it. I think it's a good way to get to know a character or get to know a world. If our main character knows everything already, it can be hard to, for us as a reader to learn more about the world in a way that doesn't sound patronizing or kind of info dumpy or just a little bit. I don't know, it's just not as, as neat as when you've got a mentor who's normally old and wise and powerful and they kind of teach our character how it's going along. Some of my favorite actually, I think, is in Assassin's Apprentice. So you've got Fitz who has come to the stables, he doesn't really know anything, and he's taken under the wing by Burich. Is it Burich or Burich? I'm not sure. But Burich kind of takes him in and teaches him the way of the stables. Their relationship grows and it kind of is like a, it becomes a father-son kind of relationship. They become family. Then later on, you've got his uncle who teaches him the kind of like the magic system. And they also get quite a close relationship. And I think they do form these, these relationships, these mentors that you don't see a lot in character relationships. There's, it's a unique relationship that I like to see in fantasy because there is a closeness there. There's also a lot of stress normally as well. You know, it's kind of like having your parent because there's no parents in fantasy, if you ever notice that. Everyone's an orphan or their parents have disappeared, or their parents are dead, or something's happened and they're just not in the picture. So they can't be the mentor, so you have to get that kind of familial relationship from the mentor. And I just really like it. I think it's done really well a lot of the time because it is quite traditional. I just like it. I think it's a good thing to have in there and I, I enjoy seeing those relationships grow and the tension that comes along with it as well as like kind of the 
the angst but also the forgiveness and the kind of the to and froing of that relationship that you often get. So the next character that I love is probably with my current love for grim dark fantasy but that is the anti-hero or the morally grey character or the hero that you know you should dislike or even just a character like it can be a side character but you know you should dislike them because they do horrible things and not very nice person but you just can't help but like them there's something charismatic about them that you just kind of they just make you smile when they talk and then they'll go and murder someone or like chop someone's head off or torture someone and you're like why do i like you because you're doing really bad things but you can't i just do like you, you're funny, you, you've got a side to you that is good, that somehow makes it okay that you do all this, you know, that character. I just like them. So you've got like Glockter in um, the first Law trilogy who is so like grumpy and grisly and he's a torturer as like his trade, his job is to torture people and get whether or not they are right confessions out of people. But he is like his like internal monologue and his little talks are really like you just like reading his page. He's not the most lovable of characters, I wouldn't say, although my friend does love him. You've got Rin as well from the Poppy War trilogy who does terrible, terrible things to get supposedly good endings, but you root for her. You do root for her. You keep kind of like cheering her on to do these things to get where she needs to go, even if it's not necessarily the right thing in the moment or it goes wrong or like it ends up being really bad. You do root for her. I just think they're so much more interesting than characters that are just kind of good from A to B. You know, they, they start off well, they end up well, or even better, and then they're just consistently good heroes. I think that's just not very interesting. It can be quite boring a lot of the time. I like when Go characters do bad things because I think it's more human, but it's how they handle that, it's how they come back from that, it's how they change or just reflect upon it. But a lot of these morally grey characters don't actually think the bad things that they do are bad. Also, they just continue doing them, so. I don't know, I just like them. Then we've got a character that I hadn't really thought about until I watched Murphy's video that's similar to this, and she said it is the brute that has the soft heart that you can't help but like love. I, I agree with this. Logan Ninefingers, I love Logan Ninefingers. I love Shivers from the Best Served Colds standalone. I just like, I just like them. I think they're funny a lot of the time. You know, they're just like these big kind of like buffoons and they can like literally just murder you like that but apart from that in their day-to-day -day life they just want to have do they just want to be nice you know it's not their fault that they have to go and murder people you know they didn't they wanted a different life but this they've been led down this road mainly because they're big and bulky and they're good at fighting but they're just they're, just, they're not fighters you know or like who have we got rock in the way of kings is brilliant character he's so funny he is against fighting because he's like the sixth son and the sixth sons don't fight or the third son he cooks he likes to cook so he cooks instead of fighting. I think he's a great character. I like him a lot, but he's obviously big, a big dude. The third character that I love is the funny sidekick, the one that kind of chimes in with the annoying but funny little like banterous humory quirks in bad moments that aren't, they're, they're probably not funny. So you've got like Jesper in Six of Crows. I swear there's other characters that I can think of, but then my mind has gone completely blank so I can't think of them at all. But there are other characters out there in a series that I was just reading. It must be in a Blade stuff, but I can't remember. But I promise you, these are some of my favourite characters that I now can't remember. But I think in like a fantasy that a lot of the time it's quite harsh and quite violent and quite aggressive, especially in grimdark fantasy, just having that sidekick who can lighten the moment and just shine a little light and also add a bit of personality to the other characters that they're with. A lot of the time I don't have time to sit around and be funny. So having these characters that allow them these little moments to be like that without it kind of just being, I don't know, weirdly thrown in, I think really helps to just give them a bit of a personality apart from just the, the, the hero that must do all these terrible things to make things good again. So character relationships, I have to say, my favorite kind of like romance relationship, which doesn't happen very often, like, not a lot of the fantasy that I've read recently has kind of romance in it that you would say is, like, the main thing, or even that romantic. <laughs> but it is, like, the enemies to lover or antagonist to ally, or even, like, friendship-wise, someone that is, like, kind of originally starts off as their enemy, and for circumstances, they have to actually come together and end up being the ally, and they have to, like, join forces and overpower whatever it is, or they, they fall in love, or... It can be friendship or romantic, actually. I like it both. So, like, you've got in the Poppy War, you know, 
you know the relationship I'm talking about there. Oh, 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 I just thought of a good one. Kaladin and Adolin in Way of Kings, you know, they're like not good friends. When they, well, when they first meet, they hate each other, they instantly, they're just like, they just grate on each other's nerves. You know, that way that you do with some people. But then they become like proper good bromates and they're just such a good duo. And I just think I would like to be friends in with them in real life because I think it'd be funny. And I just really like that. That's why I just thought, you know, I like those kind of friendships. I don't think you see that a lot, especially fr friendship wise rather than romance wise in fantasy. So I'd like to see that more of like antagonist turned ally rather than enemies to lovers. That's okay, I do like that. But antagonist turned ally, I think, is my favourite. I love that. And then obviously that kind of leads me on to the next one. All these are kind of linked, I have to say, the character ones. But it's platonic friendships. You know, like the proper diehard ones, but not just the ones that they're good friends and they will be with, like, they will fight for each other to the end and they never have any hiccups. I think Kit and Rin's friendship in the Poppy War is one of the best ones because they fall out all the time. They do some quite horrible stuff to each other, but in the end, they will always be there for each other. They will always fight for one another. Well, are they on opposite sides at one point? But they will always, you know, come back together and there's, there's a strength there in their friendship that you don't often see, but also a realistic nature. And that leads me on to also like another friendship relationship thing is the found family trope. You know, you know the one, I just, this links my heist thing. It's where everyone comes together, you've got a mismatch of characters. So you've probably got the like, funny like sidekick, you've got the morally gray character, you've got the leader, you've got the hero, you've got all these different like people that come together and form really close knit tight bonds. And they just have not a good time, probably in fantasy, I'm not gonna lie, it's probably not gonna be a good time. But they go through a lot of crap together and they come out the other side, hopefully all of them, and you know, you know they've all got their back and they have like a laugh here and there and they they just eat they eat meals together, they they are a family now, you know. That happens a lot with the heist, obviously, because you literally got to go around and you've got to collect your different characters that will do all the different things in the heist. But the found family is my favorite. So you've got Six of Crows, you kind of got a blade itself. I wouldn't say it was found family, but it's got that feel at some point in it of that. You've got Way of Kings, you know, Kaladin and his army and his friends that he makes there. Again, all my favorite books and they're all there. I love it. I love the found family. So that's about it. Those are my favorite tropes in fantasy. Let me know what your favorite tropes are and if I miss anyone, please do like and subscribe if you'd like to watch more of my videos and I'll see you in the next video very soon. Mm -hmm.